Simon's Electron Microscopy Center's Smart Legendon Tutorial. On the microscope PC, if the Legendon client is already open, close it. Then go to desktop and reopen the respective client. You can then minimize the windows. On the Legendon PC, right click and open terminal. Type in NCCAT Legendon or MemC Legendon based on the center you are utilizing. Hit enter and Legendon will open. We're going to create a new session, click next, select the project that you are working on, next. We'll keep the generated name and we'll change the holder to the respective microscope that we're using, next. For the description, we'll start it off with the microscope's name. And then we'll put the LDAP account user's name. We want to confirm the image directory, but not change anything. Next, we're going to edit clients and we're going to add the client for that microscope. OK, next, our C2 size can be confirmed on the microscope PC under the apertures tab. Once that's edited, you can then click finish. Now that legend on is open, we can then go to application, run. Select Show All to see all available applications. We are going to use Ptolemy Nano 2. Then set Main to Legend On option and Scope will be the name of the respective scope. Then click Run. Once the nodes are loaded, click on Presets Manager. Scroll through the options and click Import Presets from a previous session. The TEM is Glacios, our digital cameras of Falcon 3, and select Find for limit sessions to 20 days. Select the last session and double check all presets to make sure that they satisfy your needs. If satisfactory, Control shift a to select all, import, and done. On the microscope PC, close column valves, retract the objective aperture, and select the grid that you would like to use for your template and hit load. In the meantime, let's go to grid targeting node, click settings. I like to use G for label and 0.007 meters for radius. Click OK. Then in square targeting node settings, make sure sort targets by shortest path and enable auto targeting are selected. Next in square node, go into settings, Wait for a node to process the image should be checked, preset should be set to square LM, and in advanced, set these apertures while imaging should be checked with these values. In full targeting node, open settings, allow for user verification of selected targets should be checked, queue of targets should be unchecked, and skip automated hole finder option. Next is whole node settings. Wait for a node to process the image is checked, the preset is HLN, and set these apertures while imaging is checked with these values as well. In exposure targeting node settings, allow user verification of selected targets is checked and the other two are unchecked. In exposure node settings, wait for a node to process the image is unchecked, preset is ENN, and in advance, set these apertures while imaging is checked with these values. Next, let's go into the focus node. In settings, wait for a node to process the image is unchecked, the preset is FAN, and the desired autofocus accuracy is set to 4E to the negative 6 meters. In focus sequence, defocus 1 and 2 presets are FAN, manual presets is FCN. Now let's go to Z focus node. In settings, wait for a node is unchecked, preset is HLN, and desired autofocus accuracy is 5E to the negative 5 meters. In focus sequence, stage tilt rough preset is square LM, fine tilt is HLN, and manual is FCN. Let's return to the microscope PC. Once the grid is loaded, open column valves and insert the flu screen. Back on Legendon, go to Presets Manager node and send GR Grid Preset to Scope. On the microscope flu screen, the grid should be visible. 
Use stage movement to navigate to a fully intact square. Legend on in Z focus node simulate a target. Once this is complete, the template will save this Z height for future grids. Next, let's go into grid targeting node. Since we changed the settings earlier, we don't need to change them again, but you could if you needed to. Then let's click calculate atlas and publish atlas. Grid node will take an image at grid magnification while rastering around the grid. In square targeting, we can watch the images stitched together to obtain a complete picture of the grid. Once imaging is complete, Ptolemy will locate squares using an algorithm. Each square will receive a blue circle or a blob, and when hovering over each blob, Ptolemy will provide their sizes. We can make note of the largest and smallest blobs. In thresholded settings, we can alter the minimum and maximum filter range to include our desired squares or exclude the undesired squares. Then we click Find Squares and see which targets Ptolemy has selected. In Acquisition Settings, we can change the number of targets and how many groups Ptolemy creates among the blobs to target. Ptolemy bins the blobs into groups based on their scores. In this case, there aren't enough blobs in group 4. We can attribute the blob sizes to ice thickness. Once satisfied with the parameters, click Submit Targets. Square node will take an image at square alum magnification. Whole targeting node will generate the same image for targeting. Open template settings and use the ruler tool to measure the diameter of a hole. Input this value into final template diameter and test. All holes should have bright white peaks. If it doesn't, change the value and test. Once satisfied, click OK. Now let's go into threshold settings and let's click test. The lighter areas will become white and the darker areas will become black. Lower the number, the less threshold. Higher the number, the tighter the threshold. In this case, let's use three. OK. In blob settings, Border allows you to exclude blobs at the edges by measuring the distance you want to remove. Min blob roundness value of 0.8 selects more rounded blobs, lowering this number decreases preference for roundness. We can include and exclude blobs based on their size. Hovering over blobs will give you size values. You can change min and max blob size to threshold to our liking. We can also select how many blobs we want to keep with max blobs. When satisfied, click OK. In lattice settings, input the radius of the holes. Then use toggle value to show values of lighter or empty holes to get an average reference intensity value for a vacuum. Spacing allows us to distance our targets so that we do not double dose the same areas when targeting later. Finally, in acquisition settings, under acquisition target sampling, we can toggle use subset of the acquisition targets and set a value. For screening, I use two. You can hover over targets and use their mean thickness and standard deviation thickness to threshold your targets. Be wary as each grid will have different values and you may threshold out all targets in the future. So be loose with the range. Click test targeting to randomize the targets. Click OK and submit targets. The focus node will automatically find the eucentric height for this square. Now let's go to whole node, which will display the HLN magnification micrograph and exposure targeting will be waiting for our input. In exposure targeting node, whole settings, make sure the minimum score to accept is zero or less. Then use the ruler tool to measure the radius of the holes and input this value. Then let's use the show value tool to measure the reference intensity and input that value. You can then click test the algorithm will calculate the lattice of holes. In acquisition settings, under acquisition target sampling, toggle use subset of the acquisition targets. For screening, I sample four. You can note the mean thickness and SD thickness values to threshold out two thick and two thin holes in ice thickness threshold. 
Again, be wary as these values may change grid to grid, so wider range would be favorable. Click OK and submit targets. Now let's head to focus mode. Legendon will automatically find you centric focus for us. We can then head over to exposure node to see our high magnification micrographs being displayed. When it's complete, head back to exposure targeting for the second HLN image. Analyze the targets picked. We can change our threshold values to make sure we're taking optimal images. Again, try to be loose with thresholding. Once satisfied, we can submit targets and turn off allow user verification of selected targets. Let's go back to whole targeting in settings, also turn off allow user verification of selected targets. And let's let the session run. Once complete, go to Application, Kill, File, Exit. Back in Terminal, type slash emg slash sw slash bin slash ncat or memc auto screen, depending on which center you are utilizing. We can hit Enter to use the GUI. Now list comma separated slot numbers to screen. You can verify on the microscope PC. Hit enter. We want the full workflow. Type full and hit enter. Enter an old session name to base new session on. This will be our template session name. In internet browser, open ncat or memc web and go to your session. Enter this session's name and hit enter. Hit enter again to use old session Z value. Test screen info box will appear, verify that the projects are correct, and label each session name per grid. If you're utilizing different projects for different grids, you can click on the drop-down menu and select the correct project for that grid. Click Save when done. Smart Legendon will automatically open and scope control will begin to change grid slots. We'll automatically close column valves, remove objective aperture, and reset the stage between grid changes. Smart Legendon will use our template session settings to automatically screen the selected grids. These settings may be updated as the user observes the session. Those changes will be saved for future grids in queue. The user may observe the session on Legendon PC or Image Viewer. At this point, the operator may tackle other tasks and allow the session to run to completion. Once the sessions are complete, Smart Legendon will close column valves on the microscope. The session can be killed and exited. User may close out all windows and log off. Thanks for watching!